What's up guys? Today we are taking a look at the Browning X-Bolt Hell's Canyon Speed. Um, this rifle has been a huge seller for Browning. Um, it's this, the one that you see moving in the gun shops right now. The it was rifle. out of stock on Friday. I went and picked one up Monday. <laughs> I had good to check because online. They are it was hard like, to find. It was like, oh, there's one in stock. I better go right now. It's, I mean, it's uh, such a cool looking gun. It is. Um, I mean, just the aesthetics of it, pretty tough to even improve on that. It's got the burnt bronze Cerakote exactly. spiral uh, or the regular fluted, fluted barrel. Uh, it's got your radio port brake on here. A gold trigger because you got to feel like James Bond Absolutely. every once in a while. I mean, it's just a really nice platform. It's a beautiful looking gun. Um, and just a lot of good things to say about it. We got this one chambered in 30-06. Mm -hmm. um, again, for a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of a um, variety, I guess. Yeah. So this elk. is. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Yeah. For our for our elk roundup. So this is the third video out of uh, well, the third gun out of four um, that we've set up as a great elk gun, um, elk, and really many many other things. Um, and you guys are going to get to decide if this is the gun that Jim's going to be taking on his elk hunt here in about a week. Um, but yeah, lots of great, great things to say about this particular one. Okay, so um, let's maybe let's jump right into the accuracy because that's what everybody wants to know, sure. right? Um, so let's send you out to the fields to see some of these groups. All right, we got the gun fully broken in, all sighted in and everything. And now we've tried two different loads of ammo, two different shooters, and uh, the gun was heating up for sure between some of these groups. Not an ideal, like sterilized um, accuracy test, and it still handled it really well. So the first group, Center to center, 0.826. And this one was where the gun was very hot. One point one. Not that's bad. Barely over a MOA. Remember MOA is 1.05. Uh, so overall, really happy. And these are by no means the only groups uh, that we shot with this. We shot other groups and this is a a pretty good representative sample though of what you're really going to see in a non-sterile shooting hunting bullets and try to, trying different loads kind of environment. I think we can easily say this is an MOA gun. You gotta not screw up your shot, you gotta find loads that it, it likes to get the ultimate precision, but you can pretty much throw whatever you want at it and it's gonna shoot one MOA. And if with two pretty cheap loads uh, we can get Pretty consistent one MOA. Sometimes it was squeaking a little bit over, but very commonly it was it was one MOA when we were doing our job. Um, I I think if you get some good ammo on this thing, you're going to be pretty happy with the with the results. There's some kind of unique things to the X Bolt platform. One that may not seem like a big deal is actually just the X mount um, the, that they for have the on the receiver. Rings. Exactly for the scope rings. Um, each one of these rings has four um, screws. It's just solid on there. But this does have um, a release, a bolt release, so that when it's on safe, you can push the button and still release the bolt. Kind of just a cool little feature, but it's something that um, Browning has put here into the X-Bolt platform. Now let's talk about the action. The action is really nice on this X-Bolt platform. Um, and it's the same action I should mention that uh, you guys saw on the X-Bolt Pro that we also reviewed. So the X-Bolt Pro is about $900 more, $800 more than this gun. Um, and it's gonna do, oh, some extra little polishing here and there, but the real change is it's a carbon fiber stock. Yeah. Um, and so it's a whole four ounces lighter. Um, it's like, that's like two that's... peeps, you know those little <laughs> Easter peeps? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like an apricot. Maybe less than an apricot. It's small. Anyway. It's, it's, a, it's a quarter of a pound. But yeah. Okay. Um, 
So it's not that. I think the real reason you would want to go to the carbon stock is it's stiffer. Yeah. Having said that, this is a really nice um, thing. But it's very, it's it's, it's actually stock. very rigid given that it's not a carbon fiber stock. Yeah, it's well done. The action though, it's going to feed every single time. Uh, it's working really well. And also, one thing that not a lot of reviews mention is chuckability. So like a lot of rifles will feed well from the magazine, but very commonly when you're out shooting, you just chuck one in there um, and they'll get caught up. That did happen one or two times, but almost every time even chuckability will work. Yeah. Now that has a lot to do with the particular cartridge we chose in the shoulder angle uh, of the 30-06, but it was nicely chuckable. But, but speaking about that action and I mean, chuckability is nice, but the magazine itself as well, um, it does have the, what do you call that? The spiral the rotary, rotor, mag. Yeah, the rotary mag. Um, it feeds very, very well. Um, and it's just, a polymer mag, but it's good. That's true. It is, but it's a really solid polymer mag. Mm -hmm. Also, you slap that sucker right in there. It, no problem at all. Like, yeah, not like the savages where you gotta <laughs> work at it a bit. I, I actually was very impressed with the magazine, how it fed. And then of course, just the action as well. Just no problems with feeding. Not a single time. Now we shot this with with the brake on because it came with the brake. I think I would probably take it off. Yep. Um, Thirty out six. I mean, it will hit you though, and so some people may may want that on. I did find that the X Bolt Pro, at least, maybe didn't handle recoil as well as I would have hoped. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that is a point to consider. Uh, but this one in 30 out six, I mean, there was nothing. But yeah. that, but it was broken. We didn't take the brake off. Really, and this is not. This isn't your grandpa's 30 out six. No, you know it, it handles it very, very well. And yeah, we, you know it does. Um, once again, we have that radial port brake, uh, and so it's just shooting the, that force out straight down and around, and it's blowing dust right in your face when you're um, prone. This one but, wasn't as offensive as the which one was it? The fierce. Yeah, there was just there was just an offensive <laughs> amount of dust. It wasn't as bad, but I, I still it's it's a weird and engineering design for me. All happy things. But now we need to get to the elephants in the room, and there are two. Yeah. Um, the first thing is the trigger. Um, I absolutely hate the Browning trigger. I do. The funny thing is, it's, it breaks so crisp, and yep. it has a beautiful blade. Yeah, um, cool. But the problem is, it's just too heavy. Yep. It's factory set to four pounds. They say you can get it down to three pounds. We couldn't get there. Um, the screw falls all the way out before you get to three pounds. Right. Um, and so, it is very easy to adjust. I will say that it's very sure. easy to adjust, but you can't. You just can't adjust it down that much. You can't. Um, there are aftermarket springs. So M Carbo makes springs that you can go in there and replace. I'm not super happy with that, honestly, mm -hmm. because I say, you know, if the company that designed the trigger, they want it to be light, right? Yeah. Uh, if they say that's the trigger it really needs to be safe, uh, they would put a lighter spring in there if it were safe. And so it makes me nervous uh, putting an aftermarket spring in. Um, it's not something, I, it's something I've certainly done. I've, I've even taken a little spring out of a ballpoint pen. Yeah, and know. tried that. Not safe. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, but I, I, I say that to say, like, I'm not afraid of replacing a trigger spring. But, uh, it, you know, it does make me wonder um, if there's a reason that there's a heavier spring that the engineers chose. They call it... I know, I'm laughing about this right now. It's like the, what was the name? The feather trigger. <laughs> They call it's a it heavy feather. feather. <laughs> it's a heavy. I've never seen a four-pound like, feather. It's like ever. Um, walkie talkies that say they have a range of forty miles. <laughs> right. You're like, it's try like, one. He's Bob's try right it. there, and I can't reach him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a feather trigger, but it is funny. And you know, the marketing they when they talk about their trigger, they're proud of it. They've put uh -huh. a lot of engineering, a lot of work into that trigger to make it break as clean as it does. And it does, it breaks really clean. But here's the thing, and you might say, guys, come on, four pounds, really, it's not that hard to pull. It's not that it's hard to pull, but here's the thing. In a hunting situation, a lot of things are going on. Sometimes you have one second to get mm -hmm. that shot. Yeah, off. elk just walked out in front of the tree and you got your moment. Yep, sometimes, and for a lot of us as hunters, when you're out there, that adrenaline's pumping, you see that elk right there in your sights, 
you, you have to hold it a lot steadier to be able to squeeze that trigger and, and just keep it super steady. Like the harder the trigger is, the heavier the trigger is, mm -hmm. the harder it is to keep it steady while you're squeezing that trigger. I would say it takes me two and a half to three seconds Extra. more to shoot a just, good shot on this trigger because yes. of that weight. Cause you just got to slowly do it without, you know, moving your hand or anything as you're trying to adjust to more and more weight on your finger. Again, four pound trigger is not the end of the world. This is not a big deal. A lot of guns come with a four pound trigger, yep. but we're in the $1,100 price point. Yeah. And here I feel like we need to start expecting something. It's clearly a hunting rifle. It's for hunting. And I think that that really would affect my ability to, to make that critical shot in a critical moment. Um, and so that to me, it really does hold it back. Most yeah. of the other guns in this price point, you're going to be able to adjust down to two and a quarter pounds. Yeah. Which speaking of the other guns in this price point and just other guns in general, the other big issue with this gun is another two issues, actually probably many more, but it's the competition. Okay. This is a Tika T3X. This is a Tika light. T3X super light. This Weatherby is the Vanguard. Van, yeah, exactly. The Weatherby Vanguard. The Weatherby Vanguard has the Sarah coating. It has a stiff stock. A stiff it has stock. a great action. It may it's be an accurate. ugly stiff stock, but it's a stiff stock. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but and, and it's a great action, and it's a super accurate gun. No, it doesn't have the fluting on the barrel, but you're going to save a few hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and you're not going to lose out on accuracy. You're going to get a lighter trigger. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm getting for the $1,100. The Tika T3X is another great example. No, I don't get coating on the barrel. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But it's stainless. But it's stainless. I still get a nice fluted barrel. I get a great action. I get a nice light trigger. And I save $350. And it's incredibly accurate. The only problem with the Tika is a little bit of a cheesy stock. It is a little bit of a cheesy stock. I'll give you that design-wise. It's not quite as pretty. But... I don't know. I don't mind that quite so It's a lighter much. too. It is a lighter gun, actually by quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, especially because I have the super light here. So that begs the question, what am I getting for an extra $350? Yeah, it really depends on, of course, what exact, what precise features you're valuing. Right. Nobody should, nobody should feel like, no. I, what we're not saying is no one should buy this gun. A lot of people should buy this gun. It's a good gun. Um, but if you are at all price sensitive, it does make you wonder there. Yeah. And so we decided it was time for a duel. Yeah. I took the Browning X-Bolt. I took the Tika T3X Superlight. <laughs> <laughs> and we're playing a little friendly game of Battleship. Now, we only had seven shots left because, hey, it's COVID. We couldn't find more ammo. Uh, seven shots. You get one point for hitting a single dot. Two, uh, you get a bonus point if you sink a ship. Let the games begin. Second one down on the battleship, the big one. Here we go. No! I think that's a miss. Ooh, I hit second from the left. I got a point. Drilled it! Yeah! Seven shots. Let's see the official score. First going to gyms. One point plus the bonus, two. Three points. Miss, 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 miss. So, gyms total. Three, going down to Ricky's. One point, two points, three points. Miss, 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 miss. No! <laughs> That's worse than I losing. I hate it, Ty. That's worse than losing. It's like the seven hundred best rifle under seven hundred under seven hundred fifty dollars where yeah. it got a tie. No, oh, that still bothers me. But the thing is, it's COVID, and we're out of ammo. We have no more thirty out six ammo, and we've checked like five stores yeah. now. So. Tie. I mean, I can shoot a tiebreaker shot. <laughs>